Good evening, viewers. My name is Pastor Simon. Welcome to, to Riverside Tabernacle's Wednesday night prayer meeting. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Shalom. Let's begin to worship the Lord and entreat the Holy Spirit to grace us with His presence. I'm going to sing a couple of songs. If you know the song, sing along with us. Into thy presence we come. Into thy presence we come. Now by the works we have done. But by thy grace and thy grace alone, into thy presence we come, into thy presence we come, yes Lord we come. have done but by thy grace and thy grace alone into thy presence we come sing with me into thy presence we come oh Lord we come presence this evening. We thank you, Lord, that we can be in the presence of the Almighty God, in the presence of the supreme commander of the armies of heaven, the creator divine, oh, the balm of Gilead, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. We worship you today, Father. We adore you tonight, and we say, come into our presence, Lord. Grace us with your presence, Lord. Oh, come into this home, Lord. Come into the homes of your children as they view. Father, let us feel the corporate anointing. Even though we're not together tonight, oh Lord, I pray that the corporate anointing from the Holy Spirit, oh, the omnipresent Holy Spirit, will unite us tonight. Unite us in the bond of love. Unite us as we worship you, Lord. Oh, bless your holy name, my God. You are here, and you said you'd never leave. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. You are here, and you said you'd never leave. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We. Rain 
forever, God, reign in my life, reign in my life. You are King, and you reign forever, God, reign in my life, reign in my life, reign in my life, reign. tonight as we sing I love you Lord 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 I love you the Spirit of God into the church of Jesus Christ, the bride of Jesus tonight. And we ask you, Lord, oh Lord, come down. Come down into our midst, Lord. Send your Holy Spirit into this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Oh, come take over. Come take over. You have the preeminence tonight. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless this meeting now, I pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Tonight I want to talk to you about seeing with compassion. I want to talk to you about seeing with compassion. See how Jesus sees. In Matthew chapter 9 verse 36, the Bible says, When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. They were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. The disciples saw, saw people, tall people, short people, people with families, little children running around. They saw a mass of people. They saw crowds. Jesus saw sheep without a shepherd. There's a vast difference between what the disciples saw with their physical eyes and what Jesus saw with his spiritual eyes. Jesus in his spirit saw souls that were harassed, helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He saw people who were lost, people who were looking for leadership, people who were looking for direction, people who were looking for somebody to save them. Unlike the Pharisees who thought they knew it all, there were people there and Jesus could recognize them. People who knew that they needed Jesus. And Jesus saw that. When you look at people, do you see beyond what your naked eyes see? Tonight I want you to pray for discernment in your private prayer. In your private prayer. When you get into your closet, when no one else is listening, ask God. Tell him, Lord, that I may see. Lord, that I may see with compassion. 
as Jesus sees with compassion. That's the first lesson tonight. See with compassion. Jesus had compassion. And the second thing is to see without prejudice. See without prejudice. I'm going a little fast tonight because we need to spend time in prayer. See without prejudice. Luke 19, 9 and 10 says, And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he, that Zacchaeus, is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Now when, when Zacchaeus was following Jesus, the people saw him, the disciples saw him, many people saw him. Everyone saw Zacchaeus as a sinful tax collector. He was a thief in their books. He was a sellout because he worked for the Roman government. He collected taxes from the Jewish people. He took a fair percentage of that and he got rich. But that's what they saw. They saw a tax collector, a sinner, a thief. But Jesus, on the other hand, saw somebody that was searching for redemption. Jesus could read Zacchaeus's heart and Jesus knew that Zacchaeus was an outsider with these people. Jesus could read this man and he knew that Zacchaeus was searching for redemption. Humanly, we all fall into this trap of viewing people with our prejudices, with our worldview, with our set of, of uh, our, uh, references, with our set of experiences. Our frame of reference is used to squeeze people into it. And if they don't fit, then we don't want to have anything with them to, do, to do with them. But Jesus saw this man for what he was. And he saw a man searching for redemption. We judge people without really knowing who they are. Zacchaeus was following Jesus because he wanted redemption. But he was scared of the crowd and he was a short man. So he knew he couldn't get to Jesus. So he climbed up a tree and the rest, you know, is history. Tonight, again, the second point, you're going to pray when you get home. Or, uh, sorry, when you get to your closet. We are used to pray that you recognize those in spiritual turmoil. That you don't judge people by what others say about them or what you superficially know about them. See like Jesus without prejudice. Third thing is, see like Jesus See spiritually. Second Kings 6 verse 17 says, Then Elisha prayed and said, O Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. You know the story when Elisha's servant got up in the morning and he walked outside and he looked around and the hills around where they were camped were full of chariot, full of the enemy's chariots and horses. And he went to Elisha and he said, Oh my God. My father, what are we going to do? And Elisha said, those that are with us are more than those that are with them. And he said, oh Lord, please open his eyes, they may see. What you cannot see spiritually is more important than what you see physically. What you see spiritually is usually the distinction or the point or the thing that changes your life. For the better or for the worse. It, so you need to ask God today to open your eyes. That the scales of your eyes may fall off and see spiritually. He had to see God's glory. He had to lose his physical eyesight to see God. Paul on the road to Damascus had to lose his physical sight to see the Lord Jesus. Pray to see spiritually. Prayer points for tonight. And we've had five or six. And I know that, you, you know, it might seem long, but let's pray. And I'm going to lead in prayer. And I want you to pray. I want you to get a corporate anointing at home, even though you're not with me. We are together because the Spirit of God is binding us together. Wherever you are, whether you're watching this live now or you're going to watch it later, doesn't matter. Pray with me. And the first prayer that I've got tonight is the brother's keeper prayer. The brother's keeper prayer. You remember Cain when Jesus, when God asked him, where is your brother Abel? Well, he just murdered Abel. He looked at the Lord and he said, am I my brother's keeper? Yes, of course you are your brother's keeper. 
You need to pray for the unsaved. You need to have a worry, a concern about those that are not saved. Last week I told you that Jesus is concerned about those who are not saved. And I said whatever concerns, whatever interests Jesus must fascinate you. So you should have a fascination for new souls. You should have an urge to go out and find new souls. So tonight we're going to start right here praying. We're going to pray first for the unsaved in your family. We're going to start in Jerusalem. We're going to pray for your neighbors and your friends. You know them. You know the neighbor on the left is if he's saved. The, the neighbor on, the right, on, on, on your right. The neighbor behind and in front of you. You know. I don't know. You know them. But I'm telling you something. If all of us look around us, most of us have neighbors that have never heard the name of Jesus coming out of our mouths. They must have heard it on TV. They might have heard from others. But they've never heard you witness to him. Or to her. So today, we ask the Holy Spirit to give you an opportunity to speak to them. To give you an understanding. To seize the opportunity. To recognize the opportunity. And to witness to them. So let's pray now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you today. And Father, we want to praise you tonight. We want to worship you because you are God Almighty. And Father, we believe tonight that we are our brother's keeper. Yes, Lord, we are our brother's keeper, Lord. Oh Lord, we might not like our brothers. We might not love our neighbors. We might not even know our neighbors, Lord. But today, oh Father, I pray for them. There's so many unsaved, Father. And if we look through your eyes, oh Lord, we will know. Oh, if we look through your eyes, we will have compassion on them. Father, how can we let people, oh Lord, heading to hell, to be burned forever and ever, Lord, for your word says, how can we, who know the secret of avoiding that, we know the formula, Lord, to avoid hell. How can we keep it secret today? Help us, Lord, to understand that we are our brother's keeper tonight. We are the keeper of those around us. We are the watchmen of the city, Lord. And one day you're going to ask us, oh, watchmen, what of the night? And what are we going to say, Lord? Oh, tonight, oh, Lord, please. I pray for everyone who's listening tonight, who's viewing tonight, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Father. Help them, Lord, to become soul winners. Oh, we pray, Lord. I pray for my neighbors, Lord. Oh, I don't know whether they saved or not. But I pray, oh, Lord, that you will speak to them. And send somebody to speak to them, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, we bless you. The second prayer I want to pray tonight, and I want you to join me. Let me just take this. The second prayer I want to pray tonight is the prayer of healing. Yes, the Lord still heals. Despite what you may believe. You know, there's many people that stand on the pulpit and don't believe in divine healing. They don't believe in the virgin birth. They don't believe in the Bible. They say the Bible is just a metaphor. But I want to tell you, miracles do still happen. I've witnessed it. I've seen a lady, I've prayed for a lady over the phone who had an issue of blood. Yes, an issue of blood for years. And they were going to remove her womb. And she phoned me and she said, Pastor, she phoned me on a Friday and I said, God will heal you. As the Holy Spirit witnessed to me, I told her, God will heal you by Sunday night. I never heard from her for a couple of weeks. And then I asked a cousin of hers, tell me, what happened to this lady? And she says, Pastor, you won't believe it. On Sunday night, the issue dried up. On Sunday night, the issue dried up and they didn't remove her womb. So God still works. God still works. God still works. And James 5.15 says, the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. So today, if you know somebody who's sick, or if you yourself are sick, lay your hands on yourself or stand proxy for those who you know are sick. And I'm going to pray. And I want you to pray as well. You must pray for yourself as well. Let's all pray together. Because if we agree on something as a group, God will answer. That's what he says. So let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come to you tonight again with your children. And I believe that healing is the children's bread. Your word says, 
that healing is the children's bread. Your word says that you sent out the word and, the, and they were healed. And tonight, Lord, the word is healing. Lord, I cannot speak it into being, but I can speak in the name of Jesus to every sickness there. Every sickness has a name and every sickness has to bow down to the name of Jesus. For the name of Jesus is higher, is more mighty, is more powerful than any other name. And tonight, Lord, I speak to every sickness in the name of Jesus. And I say to every body, every body that is ill tonight, in the name of Jesus, you'll be healed. Not because I said it, but because Jesus has given us power in prayer to pray in faith and the sick will recover. And I believe tonight that you are healed. And if you get healed or when you get healed, I want you to send me a note. Send me a note on Facebook. Send me a note on YouTube, wherever, on, on my text messaging to tell us so we can testify about that. Amen. Prayer number three is what I call the recruitment prayer. It's a prayer for recruitment tonight to be praying. Yes, I'm praying some things that we don't normally pray, but I'm praying about something that's called recruitment prayer. This is what I came up with, and I call it a recruitment prayer because it is found in Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 to 38, where Jesus tells us that he's looking for more workers because the harvest is great. He said the harvest is great, but the workers are few. The wheat fields are white. The wheat is falling down. The wheat is falling down. But where are the workers? I'll tell you where some of us are. Some of us are somewhere else. Nowhere near the field. Nowhere near the field. Because we don't, we, it's too demeaning for us. That's not our job. That's not our job. A lot of us say, I'm not called for the ministry. You may not be called to be a pastor or one of the officers bearers in church. But every one of you is called to be an evangelist, a personal evangelist. Every one of you is called to work for the Lord tonight, regardless of what qualifications you have, regardless of your experience. You don't need experience. You need the Holy Spirit. Not by power, but not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You know, a lot of us, are sitting in the shed with our sickles and we're sharpening them. We're getting them sharp. We're sharpening our skills. We're getting better at knowing the word of God. We're getting better at reading eschatology and exegesis and homolytics and hermeneutics and theology and all these ologies and stuff and trying to get ourselves doctorates and whatever. But the real job the real job doesn't need all that. The real job needs you to have faith and trust in Jesus. You heard of Dr. John in the Bible? Dr. Matthew? Did you hear of them? Dr. Andrew? No, they were just John, Peter, Andrew. They were ordinary men, but God used them. God doesn't call the qualified. He does sometimes, but not all of them. But he can qualify the called. So tonight we're going to pray. That God will send workers into the vineyard. That you will be a worker in the vineyard. You, you. Forget about sharpening your sickle. It's sharp enough. Forget about leaving it to somebody else. Because the thing that you've got to build in this life is souls up there in heaven. A kingdom of God. Sorry, the kingdom of God is coming. Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight we pray. Together, Lord, oh God. Oh, Lord God, by the blood of Jesus and in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Holy Spirit, to convict your children tonight. Convict them, Lord, that they will become soul winners tonight. Lord, that all the excuses they have will be put aside tonight. They will forget the excuses and they will get to where the work is. When they hear the Macedonian call, they won't turn the other side and walk away. But they will come in, Lord. They will not be critical of everybody. Some of us are so critical tonight, Lord, that we've missed the mark of the high calling because we're too critical, Lord. Lord, the gospel is simple. Your commission was simple. Go 
and tell. Go and tell. And when the Holy Spirit convicts and converts, we get to baptize and make them disciples. Father, it is simple. Help your children tonight, Lord, that they will become workers. I pray for every one of them, Lord, even the little boys and girls, even the old people who think they can't do it anymore. They can witness to somebody. They can tell of the things that you've done. Lord, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Send workers out. Send workers out, Lord. We need more soul winners, Lord. We need more soul winners, not people that just come and warm the benches in church, not people who come to sit in church and watch the spectacle in front to listen to the preacher. Your word even says that, Lord. Sometimes the preacher to the people is like a man who comes there and he sings a song or he comes there and makes, he does a play or he just comes and entertains and they don't even listen to you. But tonight, oh Lord, help your children, Lord, to become workers. Yes, Lord, let there be soul winners in this church. Let there be soul winners, wherever, whichever church your children are going to tonight. Lord, even if they haven't been to church because of this lockdown, oh Lord, I pray. Or even if they haven't been to church because they don't want to go. I pray today, Lord, you will convict them. By the Spirit of God, convict them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I now want to pray what I call the radical prayer, the difficult prayer. I call it the radical prayer. You know, we hear pastors saying, you need to have a radical uh, attitude and all that. Okay, I'm not into that, but I will tell you this. We need to have radical prayer. And tonight's is radical prayer is this. It is the most difficult prayer to pray. It is the prayer that Jesus in Matthew 5, 44 talks about. And in Luke 23, 34, he talks about, it. he says, pray for your enemies. He says, love your enemies, pray for them. Now, why should I pray for those who hate me? Why should I pray for those who despise me? Surely there's a problem with that. I'll tell you why. Because Jesus said so. In Matthew 5, 44, he said, love your enemies, pray for them also. And second reason is because Jesus did so. In Luke 23, 34, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If Jesus said it, you ought to do it. If Jesus did it, and you're not doing it, shame on you tonight. You see, when you see with the eyes of the Lord, you will see what the Lord sees. And what the Lord sees are sinners in need of a Savior. Did you hear me? When you see as the Lord sees, you will see what the Lord sees. And when you see what the Lord sees, you will see that the Lord sees that these people are sinners in need of a Savior. I hope you enjoyed that one. But tonight we're going to pray. Let's all pray. Let's pray. Let's pray for enemies. Don't mention them out loud. Maybe your family member doesn't know this person's your enemy, but you know who they are. Just pray and ask God. And when you're in your closet, mention them at least. My name. You know why? I can tell you this. I've had people that I battle to, to forgive. There was one man, I think, if he, it took me three months to forgive him. And any time in the three months, if I met him, I probably would have broken his neck. I was young at the time. And I was very upset with him because he insulted me. But eventually the Holy Spirit got through my thick skin and I forgave him. And we became friends. Eventually, we were in the same church together. So what I'm saying to you tonight is, when God sees these people, or when, when you will see them with your, with your eyes, you see an enemy. But God sees a child of his, your brother, your sister, that is going to a long lost eternity. When you stand in heaven one day with Jesus, and you look at the line that is heading for hell, and you see that person there, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? I couldn't do what Jesus did. I couldn't forgive him. If I'd only forgiven him, he might have seen the love of Jesus. So tonight we're going to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, together with your children, we bring our enemies before you. Oh Lord, these people who have been despicable to us, they've despised us, they've hated us, they've spoken lies about us, they've created hassles for us, they've harassed us, hurt us, Lord, to the point, Lord, where we 
don't even want to talk to them. But tonight, oh Lord, we pray that we will forgive them. And Lord, me personally, Simon, I forgive anybody who has done aught against me. In the name of Jesus, I forgive them tonight. And I forgive them, Lord, because your word says, if you don't forgive, how will your father forgive you? And your father, your word also says, Lord, in the prayer that you taught us to pray, the Our Father, you say that you taught us to pray, forgive my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. So tonight, Lord, I want to forgive everybody. And I want you, Lord, to help your children as they forgive those who have done things against them, as they forgive those who hated them, those who have despised them. Oh Lord, let us have a heart for God. Let us have the eyes of Jesus. Let us have the spirit of Jesus in us tonight. And let us forgive, for that is in reality our brother. Let us not be like Cain. Cain killed Abel physically. Father, we are killing some of these enemies. We think they are enemies, but in reality they are brothers. And Lord, we are killing them by sending them to hell because we are too proud to tell them about Jesus tonight. Amen. The next prayer we want to pray, and this is the second last prayer. Just two more, two more prayers, this and one more. The overcomer's prayer. The overcomer. How many of you want to be an overcomer? Say amen. Say amen. Hit that like button. Say amen. This is the prayer for yourself. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 says that we should not be overconfident in our stand lest we fall. Be careful how you stand lest you fall. In other words, some of us think we are so high and mighty. We are so up there spiritually. We know everything. Some of us are Bible teachers. Some of us are professors in the Bible. We know everything about God. We know everything about the Bible, but we don't know God. Because we are too confident. Help us, Lord, tonight not to be con so confident that we think we're standing on our own. Paul, in the Bible, was such a confident man. Paul knew everything about the scriptures. He was schooled and learned in the scriptures, yet he never knew Jesus. That is why when Jesus stopped him on the road to Damascus, he said, Who are you, Lord? He didn't know him. So tonight we're going to pray for that. the overcomer's prayer, that God will help us by faith. Then we will not be tempted by pride, or lust, or unholy desire. Shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you today, Father, and we thank you that we can bow in the presence of the Almighty God, that we have access, because the curtain was torn, we have access into the Holy of Holies. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. We do not have to go to Israel. We do not have to go to a temple. We do not, have, do not even have to go to a synagogue or a church to meet with the Lord. We meet the Lord right where we are. And today, Father, we ask you to make us like Jesus. When Jesus was in the wilderness, Lord, Satan tempted him with these three things, with pride, with lust, and unholy desire. And we pray today, Father, that you will help us, especially me and your children, because I am a sinner, Lord, the chief of sinners. But I thank you that you saved me. And I, Lord, if you can save me, you can save anybody. And I pray, O oh Lord, that for your children today, that you will help them, Lord, not to fall. Help them every day to build themselves up on the most holy faith. Help them to build on the foundation that was set by Jesus who was the cornerstone. And the apostles and prophets who built the foundation of this walk of life. This Christianity we talk about. This practice. Father, please help your children tonight. Help them, Lord, to become overcomers. Help them to become overcomers. Help them to be more than conquerors through Christ who loves them. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lastly, comes to the personal prayer. I come to, your, to the personal prayer. This is the prayer where you get to ask God what you want tonight. What you want. I'm not going to ask you. We're going to pray together. And I'm going to pray over you so that God will give you the desires of your heart. You know, God gives us our needs. But when we, he's pleased with us, and which means we pleased him, he gives us more than that. He gives us our wants and our desires. He gives us more. But we've got to please him. So tonight we're going to ask God. You're going to bring your request to God. 
If it's a healing, you can place your hand wherever the problem is. If it's finances, tell God about it. If it's a relationship problem, tell God. If it's a psychological problem, you tell God. Whatever it is, tell God. He knows, but he wants you to ask. God wants to hear your voice tonight. He wants to hear your voice. I phone my children sometimes just to listen to the grandchildren, just to hear them, just to find out how they are. Just to hear them say, hi, Tata, I'm fine. How are you? I love you. That's what God wants from you. So I know how it feels. So think of God as a father wanting to speak to his children and wanting his children to speak to him. So let's do that tonight. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you. And whatever the request that your children are bringing before you today, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. I agree with them. I agree with them, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to seal this. Not because I'm saying it, Lord, because I've got no power, Lord. All I'm doing, Lord, is speaking to the Holy Spirit, or allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through me to remind them that you're waiting for them to ask. So please, Lord, whatever it is, I have my personal requests. You know my issues, Lord. You know my problems. You know my family's problems. You know my church's problems. You know my pastor's problems. Father, all these men of God who support me, you know their problems. It's a difficult time for the ministers, Lord. It's a difficult time for them. But tonight, Lord, I'm asking you, whatever their one desire they bring before you today, the one desire, Lord, I'm not even talking about the needs. I know you take care of that. But I'm asking you today, Lord, I'm interceding with them, with you for them, Lord, that you'll give them the one desire. The one desire, Lord. I don't know what that one desire it is, but I'm praying that it's in your will. And I'm asking you to supply that need. Supply that desire according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. Before I close in prayer, I want to remind you to join us again on Facebook at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning for our Sunday service. I assure you our services are not very long because I know you have data problems and I keep them as short as I can. However, I have to be led by the Holy Spirit. I don't want to make it so short and brief that I'm insulting God. Then on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., same place, same time, gather in front of the television set, gather in front of that computer, whatever, even your phone, whatever you, you have, let's get into prayer. And I urge you, I encourage you, send me your prayer requests so that I can put them on, on my prayer list. I can distribute them to the other pastors that are part of my personal fraternal. Men of God will underpin me with their prayer and so they can pray for you as well. Also, very important, all these sermons after being edited are uploaded to our YouTube channel. It's called Riverside Tabernacle. Please look for the Golden Dove logo. This logo. Okay? Riverside Tabernacle and this logo. There's other Riverside Tabernacles. I just found out now there's, that there is one in America. It's not that one. It's Riverside Tabernacle. Recognize it by this logo. Please subscribe to it. I need a thousand subscribers subscribers by the end of June to keep this channel going and I can tell you some of the, the sermons there are beautiful because not it wasn't I who spoke to the people it was God who was speaking through me to them and also speaking to me so I really enjoyed listening to the Holy Spirit I want you to enjoy that too let us close in prayer Father in the mighty name of Jesus as your servant chosen for this occasion, I bring your people that are listening to me tonight. That they are listening to the Holy Spirit speaking through me. I pray for them, Lord. They are your flock. I don't know how many of them are harassed and helpless, but I believe a fair number of them are. I believe a fair number of them have financial difficulties. Lord, I don't need discernment to know that because... That is the case in this country, in this world. We are going through an economic crisis. But I believe that your children, the true children of the living God, live in spiritual Goshen tonight. We're living in spiritual Goshen. That which affects the Egyptians will not affect the Israelites in Goshen. And we are the Israelites of Goshen tonight. 
pray that you help them. If they are sick, Lord, I pray for a healing hand, healing touch from the Holy Spirit. If there's relationship problems, Lord, whatever it is, Lord, speak to them. Save them, Lord. Save their marriages. Save their relationships, Lord. Father, help the children to respect their parents. Help the parents to love their children. Help men at this time, Lord, who are at home, that they will love their wives. Lord, that they will not think of their wives as servants, Lord, but they will love their wives as if they love themselves. And I pray for women, Lord, that they will have the heart of God, that they will do what you've told them like Sarah did, and they will honor their husbands, respect their husbands, and help children, Lord, to honor their father and mother, because your word says that was what will give them long life. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Bless the viewers tonight. They are your children. Bless them. They're your flock. Help them, Lord, in everything. Those who have businesses, Lord, they are facing financial ruin now. But, Lord, let them know that with Christ in their vessel, they can smile at the storm. Father, your word says that a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. It will not come near you. So that we believe that tonight. We trust you for that. Father, bless your children now. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Once again, I am Pastor Simon James. Thank you for listening to me or to listening to the Holy Spirit. It's been a pleasure visiting with you and sharing with you. God bless. Until we meet again, keep the faith.